So I was like, really? You know, Jay Uso has been whack. Why can't you say his name? I can't say his name at all. Dang it. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Faith, and this is the Faith Walks channel where the pathways of faith are limitless. So today, I know my face is not beat yet, but we're about to beat it because I am doing a review of the WWE Clash of Champions that took place last night. And I'm going to be doing like this bold gold rush inspired look because that was the theme of last night. So if you want to see what I come up with and, you know, what my thoughts are on Clash of Champions, then keep on watching. You know you want to. All right, I'm back. Okay, so I know, I know that was a lot of hand movement in my intro, but it's okay though. <laughs> So today, um, like I said in the intro, I'm doing a review of how, you know, the Clash of Champions went last night. It took place last night. I'm really, really, really excited. And I don't drink coffee, but I'm kind of, kind of low-key tired from staying up late. I'm like an old young person, young-ish person, because I'm 30, so I'm young-ish now. So I'm a little tired, but I'm super, super stoked about how everything went last night on Clash of Champions, like. In the meantime, y'all, check this out. Look at my shirt. Hurt Business. Oh, excuse my thing. Yes, Hurt Business. I'm repping the Hurt Business. Bobby Lashley. Yes. And that was my mic that you um saw. But yeah, so I had my Hurt Business shirt on today. Yes. Um, I would be a little further out, but I want y'all to see this look that I'm coming up with today. But also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please make your, sure you, that you do so. Thank you to everybody who's watching today. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Let me know that you're here. Like this video. All of that good stuff. So, 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 so. All right. We're going to get started. Like I said, the theme of Clash of Champions last night was Gold Rush because it was a lot of championship matches on the line. At least that's what I'm going to go with. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go in, I put everything basically that I use down in the comment section. Um, so you guys can see, or the description bar, um, basically, so y'all can see what I am using, but right now I'm going in with a transition color and I want to do like a, um, goldish gold rush inspired look, but I'm also going to include the SmackDown colors, uh, which is blue and the, um, raw color which is red um and i'm gonna do like glitter at the bottom and we just we just gonna go ham today because that's what i do i like to use these moments to go ham on my makeup looks because there were really no women's looks for me to get inspired by because we found out in the pre-show that um nia Jax, nikki cross and Shayna blazer would not be at the clash of champions because they were not cleared Come to find out they're in quarantine for the Rona. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. It was, we didn't get that tag team role, um, tag team championship um, defense tonight, and we didn't get the match between Bailey and Nikki Cross. Um, however, it still ended up being good. Now, I did not watch the pre-show. This is just my findings, but it's okay um, because <laughs> – I have an amazing husband who was looking out for me. And one day I'm going to get him on camera to do these recaps with me. But um, he let me know that during the pre-show, Lucha House Party um, and Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro fought. So it was Callisto and Dorado and they fought. And I really don't have much to say about the match at all. Um, and it's pretty much because I'm over it. We've seen it 511 times. And I'm done. I'm actually done. Um, yeah, I'm actually over it. So I'm ready for us to move on to the next match. Yeah, it, so yeah, it doesn't matter to me. It probably was an okay match. Uh, we know how it ends. Um, house Party loses. So 
Surprise, surprise. Am I right? Surprise, surprise. Okay. So, next, we get on. <laughs> we get on to the first match of the night, okay? And I want to say that the guy that does the cheers did better. I'm going to give him better, okay? Um, the guy that does the cheers did a pretty good job last night. Um, it was more, definitely more believable. So I was here for that and we were able to, you know, actually have some moments that felt like people may have been in the audience. And so I was very, very, very happy about that. Okay. So the first match was for the Intercontinental Championship. And as some of you know, who've been watching wrestling, there has been a great debate about whether Sami Zayn is still the champion even though, well, the Intercontinental Champion, even though he um, was missing for six months. And, you know, then there, of course, AJ Styles doesn't want to acknowledge that um, Jeff Hardy is the actual champion because he feels that Jeff Hardy cheated um, because he had a knee brace on him. He got hit with that knee brace. But, you know, it's, that's been a thing. My thing is, y'all know, Sami Zayn ain't got no argument. You forfeit six months, you ain't been there for no reason. It wasn't an injury or anything that we know. It was because of what was going on. But, hey, you know, you snooze, you lose, man. You, you lost your vote. But it makes for a storyline, so it works for me, you know? So, then we have, going into my next gold shade. I wanted to use multiple gold shades for this. So, I hope this turns out cute. All right, so then, um, so we have Sami Zayn come out, AJ Styles, and Jeff Hardy. And when I tell you, this match was everything I ever hoped for, everything I ever needed, okay? I did not know I needed this match in my life. And what a way to start off Clash of the Champions, okay? This match was a ladders match. First of all, let me say, I was not thrilled that they decided to um, add this match on SmackDown. They didn't have a ladders match, but just a match between these particular guys. I don't want to see that. I want to see this match. You know, don't take away from the heat and the fire that's about to come, you know, for the pay-per-view by doing the same thing on the SmackDown match. Like, I'm annoyed, irritated, and over it. Let's move on. Anyway, <laughs> like, come on, save it. But, y'all. When I tell you, so I had like kind of had a break from wrestling. So I haven't seen Sami Zayn come with the hot fire like he came last night. Sami Zayn did his actual thing in this match. Everybody did. Like everybody did amazing. AJ Styles, I'm a huge fan of him. I I love his style. I love his 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 personality. He's awesome. So of course, you know, he came with it and then Jeff Hardy I've been a big fan of him since I was younger and would watch wrestling and everything. So, uh, like I said, I didn't really know, you know, Sami Zayn from NXT and, you know, his his battles with Kevin Owens and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, I'm just getting introduced to that. So, to see him actually fight in a match, all I've seen is the tomfoolery up until now. But to see him fight in a match, young. Yeah. Young. Yeah. It was amazing. Okay. So with this match, there was so much bodies were flying, okay? And I have to just read this for you from my notes, okay? Because there was so much going on. Um, so the way that Sami Zayn, so AJ threw Sami Zayn into a ladder and Sami Zayn bounced off that jank like, oh my God. It was so much like bodies flying, Thing, just everybody was everywhere. Red whelps on everybody's backs. It was horrendous. It was crazy. The haluva kick that Sami Zayn was hitting was crazy. Um, there was a time where Jeff Hardy was at like climbing up the ladder, and I think it was Sami Zayn that threw him off. And 
like the letter just tipped over and like I was I I was scared for Jeff Hardy's arm like he fell outside of the ring it was crazy and then y'all Jeff Hardy hit this swanton bomb he went to the top of the ladder hit that swanton bomb and he act like this like he's not even in his 40s AJ Styles was amazing in this match like he was coming with the heat like I'm trying I have to focus because oh my god he was coming with the heat AJ Styles was knocking people around, throwing ladders at folks. It was crazy. And just when I thought it couldn't get any crazier, all of a sudden, Sami Zayn has been fighting this whole time. I was scared because when Jeff Hardy hit that swanton bomb, he fell right into um, Sami Zayn. So that's where he landed on top of him. So it wasn't looking too good for Sami, right? But then... All of a sudden, oh, I'm going into the blue in the outer corner because that's going to be my SmackDown side. But then, you know, Sami Zayn, eventually Sami Zayn gets up. And when I tell you, they was flipping each other over top of this these um, barricades too. Like, people was getting rammed in the barricades. It was a thing of beauty. Oh, horrendous beauty. It, I loved it. So, um, if y'all hear noise outside, I'm sorry. They, they're doing lawn work and stuff like that. And sometimes it's just loud. But um, Sami Zayn goes outside of the ring, and um, Jeff Hardy is out there as well. He's been pushing, fighting, doing his thing. And all of a sudden, Sami Zayn pulls out handcuffs. And I thought about this thing. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that was so smart. It was genius. It was genius, okay? Then Sami Zayn. He proceeds to grab Jeff Hardy's ear gauge, where his um, ear gauge is and his earlobe, grabs it, takes the handcuffs, puts it through, through his earlobe, and handcuffs him to a ladder so that he couldn't get back in the ring. He then goes inside of the ring where AJ Styles is, and y'all, I got a blend, like, I'm I'm so excited about this match. It was so good. Um, but then he goes back into the ring and gets AJ Styles. And they start fighting back and forth. So AJ Styles sees what he's about to do. And he tries to stop, you know, him from handcuffing, Sami Zayn from handcuffing him to the ropes. So instead... <laughs> Sami Zayn handcuffs AJ Styles to himself. Okay. Yep, you heard me. Handcuffs AJ Styles to himself. So even if AJ Styles was going to try to go up the ladder, he would have to pull Sami Zayn first. So AJ Styles tries to go up the ladder. And in, in the outside of the ring, you see Jeff Hardy trying to get back in, holding up this ladder, but also trying to not be in complete and total pain. You know what I'm saying? With everything that's going on. And so then um, they go, AJ Styles goes up the ladder. <laughs> goes up the ladder and Sami Zayn pulls the key. Yes, you heard me. He pulls the key. The key out. We're going to try this. Through. Yeah, that's better. All right. So Sami Zayn pulls out a key out of his mouth. Unhooks himself from AJ Styles, you know, Jeff Hardy still trying to get back in the ring. And he was able to knock AJ Styles off, get up to the top, and grab the championships. Sami Zayn is your continental champion. Y'all, when I tell you that match was epic, bodies was flying everywhere, and I wasn't even mad that Sami Zayn won because when I tell you this man did his actual thing he did his thing all right i'm back so i had to finish the rest of my eyes off camera because i was using glitter and i was using it close to my eye line i tried to get as much glitter as i could out from under my eyes so we will see but yeah we're giving harley quinn vibes here but as you can see i have a raw side and a smackdown side and i just wanted to stay true to that and i'll just put my lashes on at the end so i won't get powder in my lashes and stuff but Y'all can tell before I went dark, took my little break so I could finish the rest of my eyes. I was talking about the same Zayn match. It was bomb. 
I call it the Sami Zayn match because to me, it was just me seeing him a different way. But young, that match was fire. Jeff Hardy did his absolute entire thing. AJ Styles did his thing, and at the end of the day, I felt like everybody um, should have won the title because they all did such an amazingly phenomenal job that it's like dang you feel bad for anybody that lost you know what i'm saying so we move on to the second match which is actually for the raw women's championship and it's by um or it's including zelena vega and oscar and i just knew that Zelena Vega was going to be the one to give me my look for today, my look inspo, because when she came for Oscar and was like, I want to tie a chat. Uh, what am I saying? When Zelena came for Oscar and was like, I want a chance at the title and da 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 da. She, she had this cute little red situation going on with crystals under her eye and everything. And y'all, just to let y'all know, there might be glitter mixed into my foundation, but at this point, I don't care anymore. So it says what it says, okay? So, um, anyways, you know, I was expecting her to just come with the fire. And she literally just had, like, this pink um, eyeshadow, and I was blown. But moving on to the actual match itself, um, Zelena actually did a good job. You know, I haven't really seen her wrestle much. Um, I know she's been in other wrestling circuits and wrestled there. But as far as her tenure with the WWE, I have not seen much from her outside of her bouts with Bianca Belair, who I am still griping about. I miss her whole entire life. And where was she? Because, in fact, she should have been the one fighting Oscar for this title opportunity. Because, yes, she is at that level. She is ready. But I digress. So, um, you know, Zelena, you know, came up there. She did her thing. She really did. Um. You know, she was doing these weird little holes, these transitions and everything to, you know, try to do her best. She even got wiggled her way out of the Oscar lock. Um, but at the end of the day, Oscar beat her down, hit that Oscar lock. She tapped out and that was it. It was over. And um, the match was very good. You know, it just, you know, was what it was. Um Somebody who wasn't ready for a title opportunity that got one. And ended up being a boring match in my opinion. I already primed my face, y'all, before I started. But, yeah, it ended up being a boring match in, at the end of the day. In my opinion, like, it was just okay. You know, it wasn't a phenomenal, amazing. Like, we had just come off this high, you know, from the you know, ladders match for the Intercontinental Championship. And that was awesome. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, to see this match, it just like really paled in comparison to my, you know, to me. And we honestly probably could have done without it. But I love Asuka and seeing her wrestle. So, you know, that's always, you know, fun and stuff. But outside of that, you know, Zelena did good. But she's like ready to, you know, become in my from what she showed last night, she's ready to wrestle other other female wrestlers and, you know, have her singles opportunity. Absolutely, she's ready for that. But was she ready for a title match? No. So the match was decent. At the end of the match, you know, I forgot who it was that got in the ring, but they were one of the um people that interviews. They were, you know, interviewing um, Oscar asking her, you know, what she thought about Zelena's performance. And Oscar said, you know what? She's like a firecracker. She might be small, but she'll surprise you. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Zelena was still in there. And, you know, Oscar went to shake her hand. I was like, oh, it's about to go left. But then I thought Zelena was about to give respect. I don't know why I thought that. Because, of course, she wasn't. Zelena bowed to her and then kicked her in the stomach. And attacked her, but at the end of the day, Oscar was still able to get back up. So, was the attack that effective? No, it wasn't. But it shows us that they're going to continue this, and I really don't want to see it anymore. All I want to see is um, Zelena move on to becoming singles, building her weight back up the card so that she could get a title shot maybe sometime in two or three years. But uh, <laughs> because Bel Air, Bianca Belair could have had that title shot, it could have been hers. And instead, we give it to Zelina, but that's okay. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It's just out of the blue. Nothing built. No rhyme or reason. It just, 
Oh yeah, let's just give Selena Vega a chance out of the blue after quitting her her peoples. So yeah, I was not thrilled. Moving on to the next match. So <laughs> Cause y'all know Bianca Belair deserves better. And I'm gonna say it every time I do a video about WWE. And yes, I say it with zest because I need it on everything. Okay. So, the third match was for the United States Championship. It was between Apollo Crews and Bobby Lashley Hurt Business, okay? Uh, and y'all know I am a fan of the Hurt Business. I am a fan of MVP. Like, it just went to next level for me because MVP is the GOAT. He, like, to me, he came back and his position now is really helping us to see more you know african-american wrestlers you know what i'm saying like i remember watching a match between a hurt business and i forgot who it was but i was like man how long has it been since we've seen that many black people in the ring you know what i'm saying so like this dude is able to get the black people recognized and give them title shots and opportunities and I'm here for it. Like, for real, here for it. And so, anyways, it was just, that was good. I, I That's what I love. One of the things I love about the Hurt Business. And they just dominate and they are just bomb. And I believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just believe them. I believe them. I believe it. I don't know if y'all do, but I believe it. So, um, what we're moving on. <laughs> Apollo Crews came out. He was accompanied by Ricochet. Um, and Bobby Lashley came out and he was accompanied by MVP and Shelton Benjamin. But we didn't see Cedric Alexander, who recently just joined the Hurt Business. So I don't know why that was. Hopefully, you know, he didn't have to be quarantined too. Um, and something isn't going on. But at least we know that if he's not there, he has a place to come back to, unlike other wrestlers. At this point, if you're not like on the screen, you take a risk not being on the screen unless you're like one of the upper card, you know, wrestlers or whatever. So anyways, moving on, um, the, you know, match starts and Apollo Crews actually does really good in the match. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, when it comes to him getting the upper hand on Bobby Lashley, it becomes very difficult for him um, to actually get the upper hand, upper hand. He did good. He got kicked him out the ring one time. At, but I'm going to tell you one of the things that cracked me up is when um, I don't know what move Apollo Crews had hit him with, but um, Apollo Crews hit Bobby Lashley with something. And Bobby Lashley got hit. He put his head. He looked up. And then next thing you know, he jumped out the ring. I was cracking up so hard. He jumped out the ring. And I was like, he had to sell that drink because everything that Apollo Crews was hitting him with, like, he basically had to, you know, he would end up still standing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was really hard for Apollo Crews to get decent offense on him. And, of course, you know, Bobby Lashley was doing his thing. And, honestly, I kind of was expecting an interruption from Retribution, but that didn't happen. Um, it was, you know, just the match or whatever. And there were no attacks at the end of the match between the Hurt Business and Ricochet and anything. It was just, it was just a match. Bobby Lashley just did his thing, dominated. At the end of the day, he put that Hurt Lock on Apollo Crews and he won the match. It was over. And I was laughing because um, Apollo Crews was like tapping, tapping, tapping. I think he tapped like 10 times before the ref recognized that, you know, Apollo Crews was tapping. I was like, don't do that. But he tapped and he got that win. Bobby Lashley did put the hurts. One, two, three. Bobby Lashley put the hurts on Apollo Crews yet again. And we can move on. We can move on, you know. Uh, it was a good match. Bobby Lashley is amazing. Fast, strong, agile amazing i'm a fan and i'm a fan of mvp and i'm glad to see shelton benjamin in the mix he has a seat at the table i just want 
I love it. I'm here for the fact that Shelton Benjamin still has a seat at the table. Now, moving on, we go to the fourth match. And y'all know what the fourth match was. Well, if you don't, I'm going to tell you. The fourth match was for the Raw Tag Team Championship with the Street Profits and Angel Garza and Andrade. We couldn't even get an accompaniment to the ring by Bianca Belair. And like I said, I am honestly overseeing the Street Profits fight, Angel Garza and Andrade. It's annoying. And it's old. Like, we're done. We've seen the Street Profits beat them so many times at this point. Like, when will it be enough? I, hopefully now it will be enough for this saga to be over and i think the only thing that they were holding on to was the fact that you know angel garza and andrade don't have zelena in their corner will they be able to beat the street profits now um will it make them better they did seem to be working you know together better in the ring but at the end of the day like we still seen this match played out before us numerous amounts of times but I was very happy to have Samoa Joe back on commentary because I was missing him his whole life. I love Samoa Joe on commentary. He is the best to me. I love it. I did not I did not enjoy, you know, Jerry the King Lola back, you know, for in in Samoa Joe's place when he was gone. I did not enjoy that at all. I wanted my Samoa Joe. Period. Yeah, on period. So um, but you know, Andrade and, um, Angel Garza did their thing. They were working together very well. They were tagging each other in and out. They were, they just had good, much better chemistry. So I guess that was a point to kind of show that they are doing well. They don't need Selena. They're able to have chemistry with or without Selena being there. Okay. Wonderful. Now, the problem came in. Um, with the match when um, Angel Garza had need Montez. Yeah, he need Montez, and it looked like he overextended um, his back leg. So his back leg was like in the lunge position, and when he need um, Montez, it looked like he hurt himself. Like he had to limp out of the ring and tag um, Andrade in immediately, and so it looked like he was hurt and he fell out of the ring. And um, Montez was able to get over to Dawkins. Dawkins was tagged in. You know, he hit him with, I think it was a power bomb. I'm not um, positive. Don't don't shoot me off. But um, they went for the count. Andrade technically kicked out, or yeah, he kicked out at 2.75. Um, but the ref acted like he got a full three count and the Street Profits retained the Royal Tag Team Championship. Um, Angel Garza was outside. The people were attending to him. The ref, the not the refs, but the commentators were like, "Oh, let's play this again. Was this an actual thing? The you know the, the ref botch it. Let's see. Blah blah blah. Oh, yep, it looks like the ref botched it, and you know all that. And he might have. This may continue on uh, the saga between Andrade and Angel Garza. I hope not." But it might continue with one. And am I here for that? Absolutely not. Not at all. So, I'm hoping that we can move on. But, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, in, bet- in the meantime, in between time, and I think in the pre-show too, um, from what I was looking, what I saw, um, we saw, <laughs> we saw our truth dressed up like an old man silver wig on you know running around with this 24 7 championship and do i care i'm so over this 24 7 championship we can actually get rid of the championship itself we can put a stamp on it saying it always belonged to our truth and or something and just get rid of the whole thing altogether i'm over it but um, and like during one of the between segments, I can't remember exactly when it was, but you know, um, our truth walks into the referees hangout area 
the um, referee say, you know, this is a place for referees. And he's like, oh, no, little Jimmy, why did you take me out here? And, um, <laughs> y'all, this is real. This is real life. This is real this is for life. So, you know, why'd you take me here? I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all keep here doing your thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to where I need to be. Next thing you know, you see Gulak, who I was like, where's Gulak? And matter of fact, where's Daniel Bryan? But I digress. You know, where they been at? Um, but Gulak was doing lunges in the back, and he sees him. He's like, oh, yeah, let me get him. Um, he tackles our truth and goes for the count. And he gets that one, two, three. He wins. Good for Gulak for all of two seconds. Next segment, they're interviewing Gulak. Gulak is like, you know, um, I'm so sorry. What's his face? I don't even know. That's sad. Who died? This is bad that this doesn't even register. But, you know, he's like, you know, I'm so sorry that... You, the, the other boy, the ninja, like, he really was a ninja. The other guy died from, you know, shark eating him. And he was the 24 champion before, and he died, and my condolences, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I really don't care. Our truth shows up, goes for that count, gets Gulak. Our truth gets back his 24-7 championship. I don't care. Okay, moving on to the next match. The fifth match is for the women's SmackDown Championship, and it's between Bailey and not Nikki Cross. So, y'all know what happened. Um, Nikki Cross was unable to show up. Bailey comes out. She's gloating. She's gloating about the fact that oh, Nikki Cross can't show up and beat me. You know, Nikki Cross said she can get me because I don't have Sasha in my corner, but. You know, it's not going to happen now. I'm going to issue a um, championship, an open challenge. Anybody wants it? Anybody wants it? She literally says, going once, going twice. Come on in, ref. I'm the champion. I retain. I still win. Yes, I'm awesome. I'm so awesome. I'm still the champion. Wonderful. So, um... You hear Oscar's music. Oscar comes out and says, "Yo, let me do this. Let me do this." And she um starts to have a match with Bailey for the championship. When um now during her Oscar's match with Zelena, she did hurt her arm a little bit, but Bailey wasn't really working on that too too much. Um but when Bailey starts to sense that this was about to go left, she decides to go out and hit Oscar with a chair. And even though, you know, Oscar was the technical winner, you can't win, you know, exchange championships with a um, disqualification. So I'm like, at this point, y'all just need to let um, all of Bailey's matches be non disqualification because she's always going to do some little stuff like that. But I digress. So Oscar did not get the second championship too bad for her because it would have been kind of cool but oh well so um then sasha banks comes out with her neck brace on i just want to know how many of y'all actually believed <laughs> that sasha banks hurt her neck when she gave her um, speech about you know what happened between her and Bailey like to me that was supposed to be the moment for Sasha to say yo I you know I'm really hurt I can't believe this she was supposed to win us over and to me she didn't win me over because she kept shaking her neck so much and then she put her neck down like that and I was like over that whole interview like I did not believe a little not even a little bit like you could have sold it a little bit. And so I have decided to come to the conclusion that it is not um, Sasha Banks's neck that hurts. It is Sasha Banks's throat that hurts. That's why she can move her neck. But her throat is so severe like her esophagus or something is so severely hurt that she has to wear a brace. How that makes sense, I don't know, but I'm going to go with it because it makes no sense why she's shaking her neck so much if she has a neck injury. 
I digressed. She came out with a chair, hit Bailey, start going for it. Even pulls out a kendo stick, starts hitting her. I was like, oh, she molly whopping this girl. It was good. It was pretty good. I kind of wanted them to put off, you know, bringing Sasha Banks back. But um, until a little bit later, I just wanted to wait for that. But it was okay. Um, Sasha did her thing, got that kendo stick and beat the mess out of Bailey's back. Um, but you know, before she got that chair back again, you know, your girl Bailey had to get out the ring and run. And, and because it was kind of hurting, um, Sasha to be out there with all of this extracurricular activity in the first place, you know, she wasn't able to chase after her or something like that. So it ended up that Sasha got a few licks in. We're definitely going to see, you know, some more to come between Bailey and Sasha Banks, which I'm looking forward to a match between them. Um, we all knew that Oscar wasn't going to get a second belt. Let it go. You know, Becky did it. Becky Lynch did it. Becky two belts. Like everybody doesn't have to do it just because Becky did it. Everybody isn't Becky. Okay. I must say that I am that match went good and I'm really enjoying Bailey as a heel. Um I really didn't enjoy her and um Sasha Banks together because they were annoying on commentary when they would get on commentary. But I am enjoying Bailey by herself and I do see because my husband helped me to see that it was necessary that Sasha Banks and Bailey be together because now we see Bailey as more of a heel. Yeah, he helped me. Yo, the sixth match of the night was between, well, I guess it's the seventh if you include the 24-7 championship, but I'm so over that championship. To me, it doesn't count, but I digress. So, sixth match of the night was the ambulance match between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. And when I tell you I love Drew McIntyre, that is my boy. And y'all know I like Randy Orton. He's one of my favorite heels. So, let me spray my face, and then we'll move on. Woo! So, this match between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton has been building. You know that Drew McIntyre is coming in with a draw, oh, jaw. One, two, three. The match between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre has been building because you know that Drew McIntyre's jaw was fractured or broken, same difference. Um, Randy Orton got a nice beat down from Drew McIntyre. Like there is a lot going on. And you know that Drew McIntyre wants revenge for Randy Orton coming after him um, and his jaw. So this was like really, really exciting. I was excited for it. So let me tell you what had happened was, okay. I was so excited because this match was literally fire. Um, you know, Randy Orton comes out, Drew McIntyre comes out, um, Drew McIntyre comes out, and you know, my boy Randy Orton snakes out of the ring doing his little snakeish thing, which I'm here for it. Um, then you know, they began fighting and everything. And, you know, the usual is the match is good. The match is going well. You know, Drew McIntyre is doing his thing. He's getting some hits up on my boy, Randy Orton. Randy Orton is, you know, getting a little dominance here. You know, they're yeah. both doing their thing, doing a great job. This is great. So, um, Randy Orton did try to go for the RKO, but, of course, Drew McIntyre gets out of it. Wonderful. Then... Y'all, Randy Orton tries to go for another move, and you see his um, ankle is grabbed by a hand. And there is a man standing there, and he has a mask on. <laughs> Y'all, guess who it was? It was the Big Show. It was the Big Show. And y'all, this is going to sound really petty of me. I'm so sorry, but I had to say it. I feel like they need to change the Big Show's attire to ha him having pants he needs pants he needs pants it it was something about it that made him look like more aggressive more 
evil, more, you know, intimidating. That's what it did. It made him look intimidating. And it was so good. So, um, we know that Big Show had previously had a match with Randy Orton. And when he had his match, he was beat down and punted by Randy Orton. Okay? So, we really were not expecting to see him. We haven't seen him since. And it was so cool to see him come back. Came out there, slammed your boy Randy Orton through the commentary table, like demolished. It was done. And you see Drew McIntyre gets out and he's laughing. He's laughing at the whole situation. So he starts beating down. They end up brawling in the back of um, the Thunderdome. Um, but yeah, they start brawling in the back and everything. And it was, you know, awesome. Drew McIntyre is dominating and, you know, doing his thing. Before um, Randy Orton could get any defense in, guess who shows up next? Christian. Can you believe it? Christian is another one. He had an unsanctioned match with Randy Orton. And in his unsanctioned match, unfortunately... He got the beat down and was punted as well. And we haven't seen him since. Well, we did see him for an interview and, you know, he was hurt by it. And But we didn't expect to really see him at all. And he came out there and just slams him through the catering table. I was like, oh, that food went to waste. Man, that was so sad. But when I tell you Christian did his thing, beat your boy down, it was great. So they going back forward, exchanging through it, going through exchanges again and whatever. And Randy Orton manages to get back on top. He's beating your boy Drew McIntyre down. It's really, really rough. It's not looking good. He's even able to slam Drew McIntyre on the windshield of the ambulance that's sitting out there. Because with the ambulance match, if I didn't say it earlier, the ambulance match, you have to um, render your opponent inactive and close the door and... That's how you win the match. So, Randy Orton was on top. So was Drew McIntyre. Randy Orton slams. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because what happened. So, Randy Orton slams Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is so... His back was so messed up. It's not funny. But his back was so messed up. Like, cut up from the glass and everything. But I'm going to tell you who's messed up more. Your boy, Randy Orton, was so messed up that he tried to go cover him. Okay? He went for the cover. I said, y'all need to check on Randy Orton because he is not okay. Like, he's really not okay. But okay. So, while they're on the windshield, Randy Orton went for the cover. Of course, it came to nothing because, you know. We couldn't finish here. It would be a travesty. So, then they get to the roof. And um, Drew McIntyre is hanging off the edge of the ambulance. Because um, Randy Orton was able to get him in. And I'm like, Drew McIntyre was literally as tall, just about as tall as an ambulance. So, it made no sense why he was just hanging there. Like, it was so dangerous for him to fall off. But I digress. So, he's hanging there. He falls off. You know, we're like, oh, and then <laughs> next thing you know, you see Shawn Michaels standing on top of the ambulance. He gives him that, gives Randy Orton this sweet chin music, okay? Because you it know, was a thing of Shawn Michaels is another person that was punted by your boy, and we hadn't seen him since. Shawn Michaels was able to give Randy Orton that sweet chin music. He kicked him and then pushed Randy Orton off the ambulance beautiful just like my highlight um, okay drew mcintyre did get randy orton for a claymore but when he went for the claim claymore or he tried to go for the claymore randy orton moved out of the way and when he moved out of the way um drew mcintyre's leg hit the ambulance door off like he completely knocked that joint off okay and when he knocked it off, he hurt his um, leg really bad. And so, of course, your boy Randy Orton was capitalizing on that, right? So, capitalizes, capitalizes to the point that he's able to get Drew McIntyre in the back of the ambulance. And he's going um, to close the door, but Drew McIntyre is able to get up enough strength to, you know, block him from closing that second door. He closed one door, but... 
block them from getting that second door shut. And then he got out and he starts fighting Randy Orton and just fighting him again. He claymores him, knocks him out, puts him in the back of the um, ambulance. But before he could close the door, let me tell you what Drew McIntyre did. Drew McIntyre pulls Randy Orton out just a little bit so that his head is hanging out and punts him. Punch and it's him. over, kid. It's over. Drew McIntyre retains his WWE championship. It was a beautiful match, and I'm really, really glad that Drew McIntyre won. It was also great seeing everybody involved in the match. Now, at the end, it was so cool because, um, you know, Randy Orton is in the back of the thing. And you're not expecting the ambulance to move, but all of a sudden, they give a close-up shot, and you see Rick Flair driving the ambulance away. It was so cool. That match was so awesome. Those guys, like, put their bodies through it. That was just great to see that. Like, it was great to see Ric Flair and everybody who had been punting, like, band together and take down the legend killer. Because apparently he isn't much of a legend killer if they all came back to beat him down. You know what I'm saying? But I digress. It was a great match. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The guys really just put their bodies through all kinds of stuff. Like, they deserve a six-month vacation. But if they do that, then I won't be able to enjoy wrestling. So, get them a good two-hour bath and with some Epsom salt, and they should be fine. Um, but it was so good. It was, it was lit. I enjoyed that match a lot, and I'm glad to see Drew McIntyre retain. So, I'm going to put my lashes on. And we're going to talk about this seventh match that came up. Or the eighth match, if you're considering the 24-7 championship, which, whatever. So, the next match was for the Universal Championship. And, you know, we haven't had the opportunity to build many matches um, when it comes to Roman Reigns. Because we haven't seen him in a little while. So, this match is between Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. And, first of all, it was a stretch for me to begin with. To even think about um, Jey Uso getting a chance at the Universal Championship. You know, I'm like, really? Jey Uso has been great for backup for Roman Reigns. But as far as, you know, getting that Universal Championship from him, I didn't see that happening at all. And I also didn't get, like, the bill for it the way I wanted to. I know they tried, like, they had Rikishi on there. They had Roman Reigns' father on there doing a package saying how he can do this and blah, blah, blah. But I just really didn't believe that Jay Uso could do this. But, you know, and I didn't, like, get as much bill for the match as I wanted to. But it was okay because it was Roman Reigns, honestly. That's how I am. I'm a Roman Reigns fan. I don't care what nobody got to say. I love him coming back as a heel. It was great for me. Okay? If y'all saw from SmackDown the other night, that Superman punch that your boy Roman Reigns delivered to Jey Uso was legendary. It was the stuff of legends. Okay? Great. So, I was ready for the match. Um, even though there wasn't enough build. Which, it was only so much you can do. So, um, Jay Uso comes out. He was ready to go. Um, he was pumped. He was like, yes, we're going to do this. I'm going to get this championship, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be awesome. Whatever. And then, Roman Reigns comes out. Roman Reigns comes out. He has no shirt on. Hey, ladies. Um, He had no shirt on. And he was ready to beat this man down. Okay? So, I was ready for it. I really was. I was ready for it. And, you know, Paul Heyman also accompanied Roman Reigns to the ring as well. So, you know, he was out there, you know, singing his praises, the usual, tribal chief, blah, blah, blah. He's ready. During this match, Roman Reigns was so methodical, the way he was fighting <laughs> Jey Uso. 
And when I tell you, like, he was beating him down, beating him down. And there was very little offense that Jey Uso was able to get on him. You know what I'm saying? And there was one point in the match where, um, like, the commentators were moving back from their um, seats because they were expecting Roman Reigns to hit um, Jey Uso, you know, through the table, slam him through the table or whatever. And Roman Reigns was like, nah, no, he's family. I wouldn't do that to him. But then we get to a spear. Roman Reigns hits Jey Uso with a spear, covers him, and Jey Uso kicks out. And you see something click in Roman Reigns' brain. <laughs> Did you know? All I was saying the whole time when I saw that click, I was like, um... It was nice knowing Jay Uso. I really enjoyed his theme music. Uh, he was, seemed like to be a very nice person. God bless his family. Like we, I was scared we were gonna have to issue out some condolences because Roman Reigns snapped, snapped. Like he would just run into this boy, knocking him all the way out. The way he would punch him out, like Jay Uso was flipping over, and body would be lifeless, like a dead. Like it was ridiculous. Like it, he beat that boy down so bad. He even hit him with a second spear, and you know that you know Jay was delusional after that point. And Roman Reigns. You know, hits him with a second spear. And he says, you know, I don't, he didn't even go for the cover because he decides, Jay, you need to tell me that I am the tribal chief. I'm the head of the table. And the whole time during the match, Roman Reigns is talking trash. He was like, see, this is that butt whooping, because y'all know I, I'm trying not to cuss. This is that butt whooping I was telling you about. Get your payday and a butt whooping. This is what I was telling you about. But Roman Reigns begins to say, yo, tell me, say it. I need you to say it in front of all these people. He's grabbing his face. Look, at this is my cameraman. This is my WWE. Tell everybody that I am the tribal chief. I am the head of the table. I got to do this for the family, blah, blah, blah. And Jay Uso, out of his pride or insanity because of the numerous spirits that he had just received, not to mention the beatdown that he had taken, refused to call Roman Reigns the tribal chief. And this only infuriated Roman Reigns further. And so Jay Uso is getting beat down so bad that Paul Heyman is afraid. And so he begins to say, to Roman Reigns, you are the tribal chief, and da 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 da. And Roman Reigns was like, I don't want to hear it from you. I want to hear it from him. This is a family situation. So <laughs> it was so bad. Like Jay Uso just looked so helpless out there. And so then you see Jimmy coming out there, got his leg brace on. He comes out there and he has a white towel in his hand. And he reaches through the ropes and grabs. Um, Jay Uso and says, I'm throwing in the towel, man. And, and you just hear Jay Uso say, No, don't do it. And y'all, y'all, I was so sad. I felt that in my soul. It was so sad. It was so sad. Like, it was just so sad to see Jay Uso. He was like, No, nah, don't do it, man. Don't do it. You can't. I got to win this. I got to do this. It's my time. I got to do this for me, man. It's like, No, nah, don't do it. And I felt so bad. <laughs> I could have shed a tear. I'm so I'm crazy. I could have shed a tear. It was so sad. It really was. And so, um, at first, Jimmy didn't, you know, throw in anything. And he was like, come on, man. Don't do this, man. Blah, blah, blah. But Roman Reigns was just so infuriated and continued to beat down, like, pummel him. Like, de 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 pummeling him. And it was just so hard to watch, but you didn't want to look away at the same time. And so Jay was like, I just can't do this. I have to throw in a towel. He threw the towel in for him. And then he, Jimmy goes in and cover, like hovers over top of Jay Uso. And he's like, please stop. Because Roman Reigns was just beating up on your boy. And it was nothing that anybody could do about it. And once he threw in a towel, 
like Roman Reigns was even arguing with the ref. Like he was like, like nah, you work for me. Get out of my face. When the ref was just trying to do his job, but whatever. Jimmy at the end looks at Roman Reigns and said, "You're the chief, man. <laughs> You're the chief." And it was just so sad. Like he was like, "That's it, man. This is over." All right, I'm going to put on my legs because I'm not even going to act like I could do this on camera. Like, the look on Jimmy Uso's face, like, he was so worried about Jay. And the look of satisfaction that Roman Reigns had and as Paul Heyman came into the ring and was like, you are the tribal chief and gave him his championship and, you know, Roman Reigns retained. Like, Roman was so demented. In his beatdown last night that I was hurt. I was like, is this man going to be all right after this? After this beatdown, like, like I would low-key have to be mad at Roman Reigns after that. Like, for real, for real. Like, we couldn't talk for a little while after that. Like, I really would have to see that check that he was talking about to see that it was worth it for that beatdown. Like, this was epic. It was the best. Like, I literally was afraid for Jay. Like, I cannot express it enough. It hit me in all the right places. Like, it hurt me to see Jay hurt. Like, I felt bad that he lost. Really? I really hope y'all can't hear that noise on camera. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so that was the saga. Saga of Jay Uso and Roman Reigns ended it is over. That is how the night went for Clash of Champions. And believe it or not, I'm just finishing my makeup. Most of the time, I'll be having like time. Okay. Go hook the lipstick. Bang. This is cute. I really like this look. All right, y'all. So this is okay. my Clash of Champions inspired makeup look. What y'all think? What y'all think? Got that gold rush. Got that Harley Quinn. Got that Smackdown Raw. I'm loving this. I think I did good. In my opinion, you know. <laughs> but anyways, Clash of Champions was really, really good. And, you know, Raw last week sucked so bad. That I was like, either the writers were just really planning for Clash of Champions that they didn't give anything to Raw, or we have a reason to really, really be afraid. But when I tell you, I'm just really, really impressed. I, I don't have a word for it, but the wrestlers like just did their thing. Like they put their bodies on the line. I, they did things that just really made me like, how do y'all do this? Like, it wouldn't be me. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you put your body on the line like that? They were beaten, battered, and bruised. And it was great. The goods definitely outweighed the bad. And, and the unnecessary. But <laughs> it was so good. And we saw revenge. We saw beat downs we saw high flying acrobatics we saw foolery we saw family breakdowns i just that last match did it for me drew mcintyre and randy orton's match also amazing and the ladder match amazing clash of champions was it i enjoyed it so that's all i have to share Y'all, this, if you see something on my, this is literally glitter and powder. Okay. But, y'all, so let me know down in the comments how you felt about Clash of Champions. How you feel about this book. Did I pull it off? Did I slay? You can't tell me I didn't slay because I know I did, but you can comment. Please comment down below and let me know how you feel. And, yeah, I'll see y'all the next time because Hell in a Cell is taking place next month. October the 25th, and we'll be back for that. And hopefully I can get my husband on 
comment down in the comments if you want my husband to be give me a extra special like like really encourage him he doesn't want to get on a camera and i really really would love if he would do these overviews with me because the commentary that he has is so amazing so leave it down in the comments if you want to see my husband on the hell in the cell review that i do okay so thank you so much for watching i love you guys and i hope you enjoyed see you next time bye